What's up, guys? I'm here with professional K1 fighter Damien Darker. Damien, thanks for coming down. No problem at all. Uh, thanks for having us. No matter. Uh, before we get on to your upcoming fight at Warriors, let's reflect on Cajuns yeah. uh, for a minute. Before we get on to the controversial des decision, that was your first K1 fight altogether. Yeah. And it was ever. professional. Yeah. So, that being said, how would you rate your performance that night? Um, I was happy with the performance. Um, there's a few reasons why I decided to just go go with the pros straight away. Um, from watching from the outside for a long time, um, just looking being at K1 shows and seeing slowly K1 starting to take over from the kickboxing world and um, mm. just starting to to be at shows all the time and seeing that there's you know it, there's no difference in class of the professionals and um, it's just literally that they've got no shin pads on you know so. And then just going through it in my head and stuff. Pros don't train. They don't train pro. They only fight pro, you know. So it's just about biting the bullet and just going with it. Um, and I was just happy I did, you know, because I'm, you know, I made up the decision. I'm not gonna go amateur and, and get my legs kicked for free. I want to be doing it. If I'm gonna get my legs kicked, I want to be making money, you know. So I just decided I, I felt I belonged at that level, and um, yeah, I was happy with the performance. Felt comfortable in there. Um, Imagine. Adrenaline is great. You didn't feel feel no. anything until after everything was good. So I was happy. Yeah, I was happy overall, other than the decision. But I was happy, you know. Do you ever have imagined starting as quickly as you did your first kick? Hadn't yeah. sure. You landed <laughs> some vicious spinning leg kicks throughout yeah. the contest. Um, in my head, I visualized it. You know, um, throughout the week coming up to the fight. Um, yeah, I'd use that a lot. You know, just visualizing stuff. Um, and I'd visualized the knockout. You know, but um. But he was tough, you know, Dylan was tough and he and he took it and he got up, you know, um he was very tough, you know, he took took a big one in the third round as well. Um he was he was really, really tough, but um yeah, I, I use visualisation a lot and hopefully, you know, um in the next fight the knockout will come. When the final bell went, how confident were you that you had done enough to get this decision? Yeah, very confident, you know, very confident. Um there's a few factors playing into my head. As soon as I heard split decision, straight away, I knew it was controversial, you know, straight away going, okay, this doesn't feel good. Um, but a few things playing into my head, like we were robbed of the eight count, you know, the first round should have been a 10 8 round, mm -hmm. so straight away. Yeah. Um, if any round he had success in, it was the second, you know, um, I think it took three silly kicks on the inside of the leg. He felt like he was gathering a bit of momentum. But we still felt we landed. We were the one going forward. We were the more, landing the more aggressive shots. You know, we were the more aggressive fighter. So we felt we had dominated the fight and done enough to win it. But like that, you, you, when it goes to the judges, you know, not, you never know what's going to happen. Like, mm. so when your coaches got into the cage at the end, what did mm. they say to you? And did their body language reassure you that this was this yeah. is yours all day? Yeah, like I've had, you know, I've had the same coach since it was since it was four years of age. Um. And yeah, they're brutally honest, you know, like he, he'd tell me, um, he'd let me know, he'd wake me up um, if he thought I was behind. But throughout the fight, he was, you know, keep doing what you're doing, beautiful, keep doing what you're doing. Um, you know, a few things, like like obviously looking back on it, we need to work on, on stuff. Obviously, it's our first pro fight, you know. Um, but yeah, we were, we were calm through and we thought we'd, we'd definitely done enough to get the decision. Um, I don't know, it's a mix of things, I think. The first round was just so dominating. Anything other than that just looked like he was doing better. And I don't know if the judges just seen mm -hmm. it that way as well. I don't understand. But um, um, I think, again, with the mix of styles that was on the show, the show was ran great. Everything was perfect. But I just don't know if there was a little bit of mix-up with judging. Um, just due to judging the different styles. And mm -hmm. like that, judging in general is an opinion. It's an opinion how people see the fight. So if someone comes from a, a toy boxing background, I think that's how you could have seen the fight a little bit more different than, than a K1 George, you know, like a kickboxing George would have seen it, you know, um, that's all, that's the only way I could see it. When Dylan's hand was raised, raised credit to you, you were very gracious mm. um, in defeat, was it very hard to um, stay composed in that moment? It was no, your debut. You know? Yeah, it's, it was my debut and stuff, but no, like, I don't mind, you know, um, people, I just want people talking, I just want people talking, I want to make as much noise as I can. Um, and I could hear the crowd. I could hear the crowd in in the cage. I could hear them on and out of them. I could hear it every time. I miss them with a spinning kick. I could hear the crowd. You know, and that's just you know that's that's all I want. I want to be there to be entertaining. You know, I don't want to be in a bar and fight and get my hand raised. I'd rather be in an exciting fight and be dominating the fight like we felt we did. Um, and at the end of the day, it's pros now. So I've been robbed before in the amateurs. You know, we we get on with it. And um, it could be a bitter pill to swallow, but. Um, at the end of the day, now that I'm in the pros, I'm still getting paid. I don't care if I get robbed. You know, mm -hmm. once people are talking, I'm getting paid. I don't give a crap.
and are people talking what's the reaction yeah, been like I since th- I think everything happens for a reason so I think the decision didn't go my way but I think that got that got social media more you know I think if I had got my hand raised I don't think people would be talking about it as much um, it caused a bit of controversy and, and it was going around on, on, on social networking for for a little bit longer than it would have I think um, so I think everything happens for a reason I think people are talking more just because of the decision so mm-hmm. uh, what what you actually make of Dylan as an opponent because credit to him too yeah. he got up he took some yeah. thumping shots and yeah. he fought on yeah so. that's you know, credit to Dylan, he's he's a nice guy. Um he was there to do a job, you know, he was there to do a job and he, he never never once, you know, did I look at him and think he doesn't want it, you know. He was there, he was there right to the end, you know, he was there the whole time and um, he got up after everything. As I said, the spinning kick in the third round I think was was harder than the first one, you know, it caught him right in the chin and um, and straight away he just came forward and got into the clinch, you know, mm-hmm. and he, he's 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 a tough, tough man, like um and then on the other side, the flip side of the thing, um, it's tough for him as well. Like I, I, I hold nothing against him. You know, he got in there and he fought his heart out. Yeah. Um, it's hard for him. You know, for, hard for him to see all this crap Comments as well. You know, hard, 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 fault, he, yeah, he, yeah. he done nothing wrong. You know, he done nothing wrong. He was in there to fight, um, and he done, he done, done what he had to do. Um, so I, I do. That's why I don't get going on Facebook too much. You know, I don't, I don't want to be. You know, I just put up a status and shared shared the fight our media status and stuff, and um, said nothing bad about Dylan because he was he was in there to do his job, mm. um, and he done it well, and um, it was an entertaining fight. So I, I don't, you know, he, he fought his heart out. So I don't want negative comments around to be to be thrown his direction. You know, yeah. it's 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 unfair. The judges made the decision at the end of the day. Dylan done nothing. You know, mm-hmm. so true. So moving on to Warriors, uh, May twenty eighth, twenty eighth. You're fighting Lee McGibbon. Yeah. Uh, does your last performance give you even more self belief going into this one that you can? Go to another big show and yeah. put, be really impressive. Yeah, that's that's what we're hoping for, you know. And um, the likes of this show, people are contacting us, you know. Like mm. so, that's that's what I like, you know. Because as I said, I just want to be entertaining people and I want people to be talking. I want to make as much noise as possible. So the fact that promoters are ringing us and saying, "Here, listen, we want you on the show," um, you know, getting in touch with my coach and stuff. That's that's all I want. That's that's really what I want. And um, I was at this show the last last year. Um, we were there, and um, place was packed with jammers, mm. and um, really good atmosphere. So I'm hoping to bring a crowd myself, and hopefully we can we can make the atmosphere even better. And like that, we have another guy off from the club, and um, fighting on the show also. So um, hopefully we can get a get a good crowd down and, and make it a good night. You know. Do you know much about Lee? I know he's from Blanca, Belfast. He's yeah, um, pretty experienced. Fought mm. over Europe. Uh, are you gonna look him up? Or? Yeah, like. I just know from from the post, the Warriors post that he was he's an ex MMA fighter. Mm. That's that's all I know. Um, really, um, you know, there's not there's not much about him. Um, that I could that I could find, you know, and I'm not I'm not delving in too much to look for people, you know. Um, it's nice to obviously look at videos of opponents, but if they're not there, you know, fair enough. And a lot can change if you're basing your your plan on a video. It's it's a different story, but um. It should be interesting. The Warrior FC rules, um, with the clinch and stuff, um, an MMA fighter training in a toy boxing gym now. So you kind of like, like that. You don't know what to be expecting, but we're gonna be ready. You know, yeah. you don't know what to be expecting. It's an MMA fighter. You're kind of going, what was the story when he's fighting MMA, and then what's the story now? You know, that he's training in a toy boxing gym. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, we'll be ready anyway. You know, we fought traditional. You know, we fought traditional toy boxing there and Dylan. You know, just just coming forward. You know, um very traditional style, looking to work in the clinch, you know, so I'm sure if he brings that, if he's looking to do that, we'll be ready, um, if he's looking to stand off and try and make a bit more of a kickboxing fight, we'll be ready either way, you know, so I'm looking forward to it. If we go back a little bit, what what led to having a career in martial arts? Um, I was four years of age when we first started, we, um, four? Yeah, four years of age, started in Taekwondo, so, mm. um, we lived just around the corner from it was a community centre, a community centre just around the corner from where we lived. We were living in a flat at the time and um, just my parents brought us around, just me and my little cousin brought us around, we were only four um, and like that we just got in and we started then and obviously never thought that and obviously the parents were just bringing us, you know, just dragging us down and you know obviously just times you yeah, look outside playing football with your mates and stuff, the parents would just drag you and bring you down and get you doing it so um, at the time thought nothing of it but I thought that was the same coach that I've got now, you know, he was there when I started at four years of age, you know, I'm sure I was wrecking his head then, but um, four years of age, I'm sure I'm still wrecking his head now, he'd be laughing when he missed it, but, um, 
yeah, it was only four years of age, so like you're happy to be, you know, happy it started so young because it that is just developed into a habit, so so to speak. Like the parents just bringing us, you know, um, even when we didn't want to go, and now it's just a habit, you know. Training is just part of my daily routine now, you know. It's got it's just got to be there. So it started from that when I was four. The kickboxing coach transitioned over to kickboxing when I was about. 15 14 15 and then that's when we made the transition from the taekwondo over to the kickboxing and then just walked away up through the kickboxing um just fighting full contact as i, as I was saying earlier kind of you know in, in organizations everywhere you know oska and um, okf wacko and we fought in, in any organization that could you know to get fights mm. um <clears throat> so that's that's how the full contact went we got to a really good level like that I was going away to the wacko euros wacko worlds um um, winning OSK, won an OSK world title, you know, worked our way up through that, um, OIKF, you know, four nations, um, European, just working our way up as as the fights as the fights came to us. But um, when you got to that world stage on the likes of um, Waco, mm. you're just always falling a little bit short, you know, in getting in and, and, and competing with everyone, but just falling a little bit short and, and it's coming down to other countries being on being on you know government schemes and, being, being, and stuff, yeah. that's 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 the the thing that kind of last year just just made me pack in the kickboxing you know we said right well like i'm not going to be doing it for free anymore because we're funding ourselves to go away and compete at this level and mm. these guys are being funded to go and um you know you're competing with them and beating them sometimes and then losing out with just a fraction all the time you know and um, so it's just like it's it's hard to it's a bitter pill to swallow so we just decided last year I'm done with the kickboxing you know we've done what i can do you know you know domestically the best for the last two three years um i've done done no more that i can do um without the likes of that without being funded and without you know having to give up your job so i just decided i'm done you know um i'll go to k1 route and try and make as much noise as i can and whatever it takes us to you know we're looking to chase the money and see where we can go and you know, that's Sorry, you made a lot of noise the last yeah, fight. Yeah, that, that's what I'm hoping to continue. Um, you know, when you were growing up, did you have sort of favourite fighters? Were you a big fight fan, be it boxing, um, martial arts, kickboxing? Would have been funny. The, the first thing would have been like Power Rangers. It would have been Power Rangers. That's <laughs> when I would have been four <laughs> years of age. That would have been. That would have been funny enough. That would have been um, the reason why I started on Taekwondo. Um, all this kind of stuff. Uh, Still have the toys today. Or fighters. Or <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> but. Um, Oh, funny enough, fighter like fighting boys, I would have favorite fighters now, but to a certain extent, I don't like, I don't like watching. I wouldn't go out of my way to watch fights necessarily unless you know it's a one-off big event. Um, especially domestically, I just don't like going to shows domestically unless it's me mm, or unless it's a team. I, I just don't, I just don't like watching. Um, I, I, yeah, I just leave feeling jealous. You know, I. I, I that, that com- competition if they're domestic you, you know so I want to be fighting if I'm at a domestic event I don't mind watching a pay-per-view boxing belt or a K1 belt or, but I just don't want to be at domestic shows so like I'd sit down and watch you know the likes of if you're watching looking at boxing obviously the big names you know like Pacquiao Andre Ward Mayweather all the big names anytime they've got a fight coming up I'll watch it Golovkin but um, in the K1 world it'd be all Nicky Holtzkin mm-hmm. George Petrosian if we can get any fights like that I'll watch them but um do you get too into it? Like, oh, I really want to be there, or yeah, no, not really. No, I am not really. I am like people always. They just don't understand why I'm like that. I just don't want to watch fights. It's like, you know, if I'm watching sport, I enjoy getting away from getting away from the whole fight scene. You know, what I love, other sports I love, you sort of watch then? I love watching uh, football. You know, I, I, I love watching soccer. Um, just support. I'd support Man United. Like, I, <laughs> I, I love so I love watching football. You know, um. So that'd be, that'd be me get away on a Saturday or Sunday, just keeping track of the scores and stuff. Um, the girlfriend plays basketball, so that's a, another getaway, you know, just like going when, when she's in season, just going and watching the game. Don't have a clue what I'm watching, but it's cool, you know. <laughs> just get it now, just get to chill out on something totally away, something totally different, because I just, you know, you, you get bogged down, and if you're just involved, you're just surrounded mm. by it all the time, you know. Um, so at, at, it's at good to have a distraction yeah, like football, that, exactly, just you know, someone off. Exactly, like, so I enjoy that, you know. Um, probably not been a great season for you though being a Man United supporter no, definitely not definitely not my first sport of you beat you 3-0 yeah. the week so <laughs> that's exactly it so getting back to fighting do you have any particular aspirations uh, you'd like to achieve while you're a fighter or anything you'd like to experience whilst you're yeah, in this game um, like I said earlier on we can't, like, the reason why I decided to go K1 um, it was starting to pull away from the kickboxing the full kind of kickboxing and it's just where the money is you know and 
like that, the reason why I didn't want to go amateur and you know it's because I want to be getting paid you know I don't mm -hmm. want to be doing this for free like so um, that's the reason why I decided to go pro straight away and I want to make as much noise as I can and I want to you know I want to get a good highlight reel and I want to you know start making noise and um, we're not in it to just you know to just compete domestically you know and the goal obviously is to go further you know and the goal is to make make a lot of noise and eventually get to the glory you know that's that's what I want I'm not I'm not in it to to just you know be on shows domestically and um, like that that's why I jumped in on the biggest the biggest one of the biggest shows that was going to be domestically you know I just wanted I wanted on it I wanted mm -hmm. to make noise you know I didn't want to just fight on a small show and work me way up I just wanted to to make as much noise as possible um, and try and get as far as I possibly can in the game I'm not here to you know just fight on local shows I want to make as much noise and get to get the glory as I said uh, you know and start making some money cool. is there anyone you want to give a shout out to while you're here um, shout out to my coach obviously um, Glenn Heenan um, he puts up with me a lot he puts up um, with the club a lot um, he has a full time job and he still he still runs the club you know so um, credit to him like as I said he's been putting up with me since the four years of age um, he just does it does it for the love of the sport you know mm -hmm. um, he has a full time job and he still goes down to the gym and he's working in the gym four hours four hours every evening you know um, takes a lot out of him and it's pretty pretty much a non-profit organisation it's not like he's making money out he's, sure. you know, he's, he's down there to be just due to the love of the sport like, which is you know tough going so credit to Glenn Damien pleasure talking to you and best yeah, luck at Warriors I appreciate it thanks a lot